good afternoon to all of you uh, you have taken a revision test and uh, how was the experience to you it was fine now uh, so part of this mentorship program we will be having regular revision test discussions classroom mentorship one to one mentorship etc now here uh, actually one thing is like see many many of you guys have lots of pressure am i right tension is there stress is there different kind of the confusions are there and uh, most always you may feel that i mean some kind of the motivation for example you see dr apj abdul kalam so kalam sir and his life and words are highly inspirational for all of us am i right so he used to say what all the task you do different type of the task you do am i right you are preparing for civil service examination you are preparing for civil service examination you are preparing for something else you are doing your different types of the courses whatever any task you come across different problems am i right okay you guys are preparing for civil service examination at least for last one year two years or three years many freshers are there but the reality is like different kind of the problems you may face sometimes you find a difficulty to score well sometimes you find difficulty to answer well sometimes you feel that even though you studied well you could not uh, recollect the uh, concepts am i right so the thing is what he said is never let the problems you are captain okay never let the problems you are problems you are captain in fact you should be the captain of your problems and you must defeat your problems okay if you are too much worried about your limitations you cannot achieve any goals yeah be it your civil service examination your pc examination even lkg entrance exam also if you are worried about your limitations and your difficulties nothing going to nothing going to win in this life in fact you have to be focused on your goal what all your thoughts your your actions your thoughts your energies you convert toward this uh, focus to this this focused goal okay many distractions will be there many kind of the difficulties will be there but if you are focused on your goal you can convert all those into positive energy and you can achieve your goal okay so that is the message i would like to repeat here also and this was the uh, first uh, revision program of ancient india am i right ancient india you know that we have different modules in this ancient india starting with a prehistoric india usually upsc aspirants never go for this prehistoric india but it is a safer zone you start my suggestion is you start with the prehistoric india because either in prelims or mains they can ask you question they already asked you question you remember bimbedaga prehistoric cave what they asked in the mains examination so when you come to this when you come to this particular ancient india your first module has to be prehistoric india am i right prehistoric india what will you study in prehistoric india yeah yes you will be studying here paleolithic paleolithic age is there mesolithic age is there or neolithic age is there or chalcolithic age is there you will have to study the socio economic cultural religious life that's it okay because these these features upsc can shuffle and ask in the questions okay you should know the paleolithic society paleolithic socio economic cultural religious life of this primitive men similar way mesolithic neolithic and chalcolithic what was the socio economic cultural religious aspects of these prehistoric men and next thing is you should know that the prehistoric art prehistoric art we we have come across different prehistoric arts of this primitive men so the features of that prehistoric art major settlements of this primitive men this is the only thing you have to study here this is not a herculean task this is very easy provided you follow those classes those material then you are coming across indus valley civilization am i right indus valley civilization another beautiful module and this is a sure short question module in fact so many questions being asked by upsc yeah, from indus valley civilization indus valley civilization what you will focus indus valley civilization obviously the geographic identity of indus valley civilization 
or the spread of Indus Valley Civilization. You will study the major sides of Indus Valley Civilization and the major findings. Am I right? Major findings, major sides you will study. Obviously, the three divisions of Indus Civilization. Okay, this pre Harappan, mature Harappan, post Harappan, three phases, and you will study their salient features. Their salient features definitely you will study. Then Indus Valley Civilization, its town planning, its society, its economy, its polity, its culture, its religion, its art and craft, and finally decline of Indus Valley Civilization. This much only you have to study. Any questions you can easily tackle provided you study these areas. Indus Valley Civilization. Then you are coming across what? Vedic Civilization or Vedic Culture. It's broadly divided into two phases. That is Rig Vedic Culture and later Vedic Culture. Rig Vedic Culture from which era? 1500 BC to 1000 BC. So you should know what was the political mechanism, political structure of this Rig Vedic Age. Social structure, economic structure, cultural, religious aspects of Rig Vedic people. Same you should know, LVC, later Vedic culture. What was the political structure, economic, social, cultural, religious life of this LVC? So RVC versus LVC. RVC versus LVC. What were the socio economic, political, cultural, religious features of RVC and that of LVC? This comparative analysis you must have so that any questions you can answer from this particular module. Also, they ask questions from this Vedic literature. You know the classification of Vedic literature, all of you? Yes, Vedic literature, that portion is also very important. Okay, then there is a comparison between Indus Valley Civilization and this Vedic culture. After which you come across this uh, Buddhism Jainism. I used to say this is a blockbuster module. Okay, like Rajini movies or maybe whatever. It's a, always a blockbuster module just because of the reason that uh, right from the inception of UPC exams, you can say this Buddhism Jainism is there or are always there. Okay, Buddhism Jainism questions you can expect either in the prelims examination or in the mains examination. Either in prelims or mains, you can expect these uh, Buddhism Jainism related questions. Okay, what do you will study from Buddhism Jainism? Buddhism Jainism, you know their founders and uh, those biographic features, etc. You will study the main teachings, ideologies, doctrines, councils, uh, literature of this Buddhism Jainism and these uh, social contributions, philosophical contributions, loads of aspects are there you have to study from Buddhism Jainism. In fact, we have done so many classes and videos on that. Okay, then it is Mahachanpadas. You come across 16 Mahachanpadas. Anguttara Nigaya, Buddhist test which you talk about 16 Mahajanpadas. There your focus must be. This is usually a map based module. You should know the arrangements of the 16 Mahajanpadas. Where are the exact locations of the 16 Mahajanpadas? You should know their capitals. Their capitals are there. Their cultural centers are there. Uh, similarly, the trade centers are there. Or some kingdoms related to Buddhism, Jainism. That way you should, you should have an idea. The 16 Mahajanpadas, their capitals, their popular cultural centers, trade centers, and obviously, you should have an idea like these Alexander's invasion, Persian invasions, ancient times, early invasions, their impact, etc. Okay, major founding fathers of various dynasties, rulers, their contributions, etc. Magadha, okay. Uh, then it is about uh, Mauryan Empire. You should start with the sources. The sources, the timeline, the chronology of the rulers, various rulers of the Mauryan Empire, Ashoka the Great and his uh, like uh, Dhamma. What was Ashoka's Dhamma as a religious tool, as an administrative tool? What was Dhamma? Okay, his contributions, then this administration of Mauryan Empire. Okay, central administration, local administration, Kaudilya's Arthashastra. Okay, various terminology related to Mauryan Empire. Okay, all those concepts you have to cover well. Mauryan Empire. Then come across. Post to Maurya. Post to Maurya, you have native successors of uh, like Mauryans and foreign successors of Mauryans. Okay, so post to Maurya, the developments you should have an idea. Post to Maurya is regarded as a dark age. In some sense, it is a dark age, but in some other aspects, it is a golden age. So, why this post to Mauryan age is regarded as a dark age or why it is regarded as a golden age? Gupta is regarded as golden age. So, anyway. The cultural contributions, economic contributions, social aspects or uh, political aspects of post-Mauryan age, you have to cover well. Are you getting the logic? 
then there are three prominent schools of art which uh, thrived during post maurian era you 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 remember gandhara madura amaravati schools of art okay so what are the different schools of art and architecture which evolved during this time various literary works which is done during this post maurya age popular rulers and their contributions or major historical events okay then you are coming across there is uh, gupta age gupta age is obviously you should understand that uh, this is regarded as a golden age why gupta age is regarded as a golden age after this uh, paper discussion we will come in detail with this ancient india timeline i'm just giving a uh, you know a framework an outline i am giving you right now after which we will get into this question discussion okay so what is this particular gupta age why this is golden age golden age why why you think it is a golden age because tremendous contributions in the field of literature art architecture science music medicine astronomy astrology astrophysics in all the field there is heaviest contributions during the gupta's time that is why this is regarded as the golden age okay so there you have to focus the gupta rulers then there is laying foundation for indian feudalism indian feudalism uh institutionally or organizationally if you ask that is started with the gupta age so gupta rulers are the chandragupta is there then uh, samudra gupta is there chandragupta second or vikramaditya is there what were the prominent events during their time cultural events foreign visits okay and the major works etc you have to focus on that particular area gupta administration revenue administration judicial administration military administration and terminology related to that that also you have to focus here okay and uh, now this is uh, post uh, post gupta age post gupta you know there are many kingdoms many kingdoms formed during this post gupta age harshavardhana harshavardhana and his south indian expedition and many other like a uh, north indian dynasty south indian dynasties their cultural contributions etc you have to focus here major literary works and architectural works done during this time you have to focus here okay this is the crux of your ancient india and in detail i will give a picture before that we will be solving this revision test which you have done today okay so please keep that paper in front of you uh yeah starting with the first one dikha nikaya majjima nikaya samyutta nikaya anguttara nikaya kuddaga nikaya all were classifications of what so there you note down the point when you study ancient india one thing is important for you that is buddhism jainism literature <coughs> yeah this literature related to buddhism and jainism this is very very important for you in fact so many questions upsc asked they will shuffle the features and they will confuse you okay so take care when you study buddhism jainism this is fundamental that you have to study the literature belonging to buddhism and uh, jainism canonical literature non canonical canonical original teachings non canonical is interpretations okay so canonical literature non canonical literature that you have to study well this dikha nikaya majjhima nikaya etc etc these are the classifications of suta pidaga okay these are the classifications of suta pidaga buddhist literature divided into three baskets you know suta pidaga is there vinaya pidaga is there and abhidhamma pidaga is there vinaya pidaga is regarding the rules and regulations for the monks and the nuns in the monastery buddhist monastery you know when the monks and nuns stay in the buddhist monastery they have to follow certain rules and regulations that is vinaya pidaga then suta pidaga is the original teachings original teachings of original teachings of buddha that is suta pidaga then abhidhamma pidaga is the interpretations that is the philosophy part okay so this idea you must have milinda pano you know that that is the that is the non canonical test that is a conversation between this uh, indo greek ruler minander and this nagasena okay so your answer is b consider following regarding samkhya school of philosophy you know the different schools of this uh, i mean orthodox schools of philosophy all of you guys okay so tell me what are the orthodox schools of philosophy six orthodox schools of philosophy yeah samkhya school of philosophy is there yoga school of philosophy is there nyaya school of philosophy is there vaisheshika school of philosophy is there mimamsa school of philosophy is there vedanta school of philosophy is there 
and uh, you just tell me who are or where the propounders or authors of each of these school of philosophy. Samkhya school of philosophy? Sej Kabila, okay. Yoga school of philosophy? Patanjali, okay. Nyaya school of philosophy? Gautama Sej, okay. And Vaiseshika school of philosophy? Kanara Sej. Mimamsa school of philosophy? Gemini Sej. And Vaiseshika, sorry, Vedanta school of philosophy? Badrayanya. Okay, and UPC can ask questions like these, which Indian school of philosophy is regarded as the ancient uh, Indian school of physics or the school which you propound the theory, atom theory. Atoms, molecules, they form this matter which is the basis of any living object. Okay, so what is that particular school of philosophy which is regarded as the ancient Indian physics? Vaiseshika school of philosophy. Which school of philosophy says that uh, Vedic knowledge, Vedic rituals and sacrifices is mandatory for salvation? Mimamsa school of philosophy. Which school of philosophy says that the entire universe is Maya and only one reality that is Brahma. Brahma is identical with the self. Vedanta school. Of, many branches are there for Vedanta school of philosophy. Which school of philosophy is regarded as the Tarka Shastra? You have to apply logic, reasoning in order to get the valid knowledge. Valid knowledge leads to salvation. That is Naya school of philosophy. Then Samkhya school is regarded as the oldest this is regarded as the oldest school of indian philosophy and also it believes that two eternal realities purusha and pragrati okay that combination result in thoughts movements creations etc okay so anyway these are orthodox schools of philosophy common feature of orthodox schools of philosophy you should understand they have faith in this soul immortality of the soul they have faith in this transmigration of the soul they have faith in this, what is called a God. They have faith in this God. They have faith in this cycle of birth and the rebirth, etc. Okay, these are common to these orthodox schools of philosophy. They believe in God. They believe in soul, immortality of the soul, transmigration of the soul. They believe in this karma doctrine. They believe in this karma doctrine. They believe in the cycle of the birth, rebirth, etc. Now here... Samkhya school of philosophy believes in transmigration of the soul. Is that true? Yes. Is the oldest among the orthodox schools of philosophy. Is that true? Yes. And authored by Sage Kabila. Is that true? All the statements are correct. UPC can shuffle these concepts and they can confuse you. So take care. Now going to. So your answer is Delhi. Going to question number 3. Consider the following statements regarding Amaravati school of art. Amaravati school of art thrived on this bank of Godavari. Am I, am, am I right? You know guys, what are the three major schools of art during this post Tumavarin age? post Tumavarin age? Eh? I used to say, all my batches I used to say, when you get a time, you go and visit these popular historical cultural sites of India. Okay, sell your kidney and you travel India. <laughs> Nothing wrong in that. <laughs> Take it in a funny way. I'm not asking you to sell your kidney. What I say is, at least in this life, you know, if you are truly a civil service aspirant, I would say, at least in India, you cover all the historical cultural sites. What all you study in the test books and notebooks, you know, you can, uh, you, it will be a visual treat to you. You can understand. So, what I said is, this is something, consider the following statements regarding Amaravati school of art. Three popular, yes, post Tumavirian schools of art. Can you say? post Tumavirian schools of art. Gandhara is there. Ah. Samkhya school believes in God, does not believe in creator God. That is the difference. It has faith in God. It is not denying the fact God exists or not exists. Okay. But it does not believe in creator God concept. Universe is created and sustained by a universal law, a cosmic law. That is the same belief in this Jainism also. Even Jainism, Buddhism also don't believe in creator God. Okay, Samkhya school is not against existence of God. Samkhya school is against the creator God concept. Now here Gandhara Madhura Amaravati. Gandhara thrived on the bank of which river you are? Gandhara, Gandhara. Where is Gandhara? You connect with Indian map you are. Yes, you connect with Indus river. Then going to this Amaravati which river? On the bank of which river? Eh? Krishna Kaveri, Golavari or Kabini? Hmm? Or Mullabari or Dam, which one? Krishna, Krishna river. 
on the bank of because this is a usual question UPC has in match the pair a popular site or a sender and on the bank of this river or on this particular valley which are is in the news okay so this is on the bank of Krishna river now uh, this uh, uh, Madura is on the bank of Yamuna river okay so that idea you must have Gandhara what is the main feature of Gandhara school of art that is a fusion art Western influences, Greek Roman traditions also influenced that Gandhara and uh, they produced the sculptures of Buddha, Bodhisattvas, exactly like uh, Greek Roman gods and kings. Anatomical accuracy was important for them. Physical beauty, anatomical accuracy, those things are important for them. And uh, Gandhara, then uh, that what is the chief material used in Gandhara? Grey sandstone. Eh? Okay, and coming to this uh, uh, Madura, it was spotted red sandstone and Amravati white marble okay so you should know the fundamental features of these three schools of art developed during post Mauryan age so here your answer is Amravati school of art thrived on the bank of Godavari is wrong it is on Krishna river then this white marble used in this art is correct kings princes palaces they got a prominence here that is true so your answer has to be two and three only am I right question number four which of the edicts mentioned about Ashoka's conversion to Buddhism that is Barbara edict that talks about Ashoka's conversion to Buddhism. Kalsi edict that is again Ashoka edict that is in the only edict in the North India Daradun region. Okay. Uh, then you see Hatigumba edict. It's about which person here? Hatigumba. Karavela. Odisha ruler. Kalinga ruler Karavela. Okay. Kalinga ruler Karavela. It's about him. Kalsi is the only North Indian Ashoka edict which is which is in Daradun. Then this uh, Romandi edicts, which is talking about this uh, uh, Buddha's birth, Lumbini, birthplace Lumbini. You know, Buddha was born in Lumbini. So that edict talks about this, uh, uh, sorry, Buddha's birthplace Lumbini. Now, question number five. Question number five. Which one of the following political dramas of ancient India dealt with the story of young Brahmin come merchant fall in love with a wealthy courtesan Vasanta Sena? That is Devi Chandragupta, you know, that is. Who, who written that Devi Chandra Gupta? Vishagadatta that deals with what here? Yes, Chandra Gupta and his accession to the throne. Okay. And Prichagadiga is by Shudraga. Prichagadiga is dealing with the uh, uh, yes, yes, this love affair. Then Malavika Agnimitra is another love affair. You can see that Agnimitra, the son of Pushimitra Sangha, was in love with this maid of his wife, Malavika, and that story is Malavika Agnimitram written by the Indian Shakespeare, which is Kalidasa. Okay. Kaumadi Mahotsava is by Vajiga. It's about the accession of Chandragupta first. Gupta ruler, the founder ruler, his accession to the throne, that is Kaumadi Mahotsava. So, what is important here is, when you study this Mauryan literature, post-Mauryan literature and Gupta literature, you must focus on one thing, the author and the subject or what is the theme it is dealing with these concepts are important for you are you getting the logic all of you guys okay now question number seven sorry question number six which one of the following best describes the concept in nirvana in buddhism i heard uh, morning your revision time somebody were talking about this na nirvana what is nirvana nirvana may have different meanings what is the meaning of nirvana in the context of buddhism Eh? You know the four noble truths of Buddhism? We know the four noble truths of Buddhism? Actually, it is given a perfect solution to world miseries. The world is full of sorrows. Am I right? You have sorrows. Why you have sorrows? Because you have a breakup or you have a boyfriend or you have a girlfriend or you have exam or you have family pressure or you have marriage pressure, or you have job pressure, or you have thera para pressure, am I right? <laughs> okay. So anyway, it's all because of desire. Am I right? It's all because of desire. You see, it's because of desire. So, Buddha says that the world is full of sorrows. Reason for the sorrow is desire. World is full of sorrows. Reason for the sorrow is desire. To end your desire, you should, sorry, to end your sorrows, you must stop desiring. To stop desire, you should follow Ashtanga Marga, eightfold path. Okay. Now here, Nirvana is the extinction of the flame of desire. 
Nirvana is the extinction of the flame of desire and you will conquer this world, miseries, happiness, sorrows, etc. Okay. Kavudima also. It's uh, Chandragupta's accession to the throne. Now question number 7. Which one of the following? Uh, not the characteristic feature of the Harappan town planning. Not the characteristic feature of the Harappan town planning. A, B, C, D, U, Z. Uh, yeah, it's asking about a Harappan civilization. Harappan civilization and Harappan town planning. Which is not a feature of Harappan town planning. Ah. Devi Chandraguptam, it is, it is, it is uh, written by Vishagadatha and it is all about Chandraguptha second and his accession to the throne. Okay, how he saved the wife of his uh, brother and married that uh, uh, sister-in-law uh, and uh, that story we discussed in the, the class. Now this is uh, Kaumadi Mahotsava is the first founder, you see Chandragupta first, how he founded that uh, Gupta Empire, his accession to the throne. Now here question number 7, not a feature of this Harappan town planning, okay. Windows generally opened onto the main streets, do you think so? Rithik Roshan movie you see, Mohan Jadaro, doors and windows are opening into streets. You think so? Doors and windows of one house is opening into other house, bedroom or maybe a bathroom etc. It's like that, never. You see, Indus Valley civilization, I already told you that eh, doors, windows never opening into streets and roads. Conscious about pollution, air pollution, dust pollution, etc. So that statement is wrong. Houses generally had a separate bathing areas and toilets, exactly. And uh, citadel lower town were walls. Is that true? Shruti, what is your opinion? It's like citadel, citadel and to this lower town, city divided into citadel and the lower town. Do you think they are separately walled? Boundary walls are there? Separate boundary wall for citadel, separate boundary for, wall for this lower town? Exactly. Majority of these in the cities, you know, they have separate boundary wall for this citadel and this lower town. That is a correct statement. Drains, water sheds from the second story often built inside the wall. That is also correct. So, BCD are correct and first statement is wrong. Am I right? Yes. 